How long have you been there? Just a little while. Kind of funny, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you in bed? You're always getting up. I'm thirsty. There's plenty of water upstairs. Come on. Help me up. I'm getting old. Okay. Shoot anybody. Anybody? Matthew? Yeah. Is he all right? Yeah, he's fine. I put him to bed. I'm two years old and I'm sad. My diaper's wet. I wouldn't be in this mess if my mommy and daddy bought plushies. The new disposable diaper. Plushies fit snug about around my body. Uh, sorry. Can I go to the bathroom? I gotta go to the bathroom. Only if you promise to change your diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Say five, everyone. Say five, everybody. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Let's go to the bathroom. Why? Yeah, right. Okay. Thanks. Okay, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I love it. I mean, every day they think of newer and better ways for people to wipe their ass while the other half of the world's starving to death. You go on and on about how you hate making commercials, but you keep doing them. What am I supposed to do? Make another film. Well, what's your problem? Don't tell me you haven't had an idea in seven years. Come on, Carl. After Wandering Soul was released, no one had hired me to photograph their idiot nephew's wedding. Besides, I own half the company. Now, I can't just run off. You know damn well you're only as trapped as you want to be. Wow. Paul, we're going around in circles again. <laughs> and something else is bothering you today. What is it? Okay. You asked for it. You know that when I did Wandering Soul, I started experimenting with astral projection. Oh. And I know it didn't work, because I didn't understand it. There was nothing to understand, don't you see? Six months ago, I went to one of those boring industry cocktail things that Jennifer always hates to go to, and I met a woman, Janice, a dancer. She got me back into it. Into what? Some lunatic notion about traveling outside your body? Come on. How can you sit there and judge me like that, Carl? Have you ever tried it? Do you even want to understand? Can I tell you something, man? It's incredible. The surge of energy that you get when you leave your body. The sense of total freedom. Great. I'm delighted. But just remember where it's coming from, okay? No, think what you like. But it's given me the strength to be able to put up with this mundane bullshit that I have to waste what's ever left of my creative juice. It's given me a whole new outlook on life. And maybe death, too, for that matter, because now I know there's a way out. And why haven't you told me all this before? Who is this woman, this uh, Janice? Some kind of guru? An incredible woman. Makes no demands, but it's always there. Someone that I can relax with. I don't have to live up to any expectation. Don't you see what you're doing? No. What am I doing, Carl? Running away from my problems instead of facing up to them? Is that what I'm doing? For the first time in my life, I'm beginning to see things a little differently. And you tell me I'm out to lunch. No, it's not. I believe a word I'm saying. For Christ's sake, Paul, you can't just leave like that. Watch me, Dr. Meister. Hey. 
Hello, Paul. Must have been a good shoot. Terrific. Any calls? Uh, Dr. Meister, about 15 minutes to go. Thank you. Calls again. Tell them I can't be reached. Ever. having an appetite when your food smells like paint stripper? I'm sorry. I was working on a dresser. Well, can't you do it outside? It smells like a toxic dump in here. It's dangerous, you know. And that gun in your den isn't dangerous? Oh, for God's sakes, Jennifer. Jesus. Let's not fight again, all right, Paul? I just put Matthew to bed. How is he? 
He's fine. If he's fine, why is he getting up all the time? Maybe it's because we're always fighting about paint stripper and guns in the house, late night business meetings. I'm sorry. I guess a lot of it's been my fault. No, it's not all your fault. Oh. Good chunk. <laughs> I want to help, Paul. Just tell me how. Dr. Meister! Dr. Meister! Holy shit. Get out of the city. Mm hmm. Better enjoy it while we can, since your old man's still on the farm. What? Since when? Well, if it ain't Super Cop, how you doing, Stuart? Calling me in for simple heart attacks now? What's the matter? You lonely? Well, it came in as a simple heart attack. But check this out. Officially, they're calling this a heart attack. Jesus. <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> you know, maybe you're in the wrong business. Uh, how about interior decorating? Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, speaking of interiors, this one's a beauty. It might still be a heart attack, but if it is, it's the weirdest one I've ever seen. No kidding. You, uh, gonna dig in? You bet your lunch. that you were going to sell the farm. I was going to. I only put it up for sale yesterday.
Come take a peek at this, Stuart. Looks like a goddamn abstract. Every rib is broken, but they're jutting out as if they've been broken from inside the body. You figure it out. Every vital organ, the liver, pancreas, kidneys, lungs, even the heart, is either punctured or completely ravaged. Remember those uh, red welts on his chest and abdomen? Mm -hmm. Massive hemorrhage. That's insane. Tell me about it. Any traces of uh, drugs or other foreign substances? Nothing. Well, what is it? I don't know what it is. I just know what it looks like. Looks like our dear Dr. Meister swallowed a bomb. <clears throat> oh, I'll have to stitch you up. I was afraid you'd say that. What the devil got into your job, Bill? It was just an accident. Bill? I don't know, Tom. I don't know. Are you sure Paul's not hungry? Maybe we should ask him again. He just wants to be alone for a while, Dad. He'll eat later. How are you doing, buddy? Okay. That's the scaredest I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, it was. You having fun? Why do they make such stupid machines? Prove you should stick to producing. Hope that wasn't one of our spots. No, some poor little thing I've had for years. <laughs> what happened to you? Dog bit me. Terrible. I thought my cat was ruthless. How was your weekend? <laughs> Paul, you know me. You, you know what I am. I spent half my life chasing every six-footer that moved. But this weekend, something different happened. <laughs> she. It was more than just the sex. It was it was laughter and, and the talking and just watching her. Oh God, I'm so confused. I, I think I'm in love with a woman. Yeah, Helen. Paul, Doctor Meister, secretary for you. I told you I couldn't be reached for him. But she says it's very important. We're on. Yes, May, what's so important? Dr. Meister's dead. Guard found him in the hallway this morning. Mr. Sharp. Mr. Sharp, are you there? second after Matthew woke me up, I vaguely remember traveling, but I didn't know where I'd been. It's only when we got to the farm and I saw that for sale sign that I knew I'd been there. You traveled to the farm. Why are you so upset? Because I felt weird, and I didn't know why until the dog attacked me, and I can't understand it because I've known that dog since he was a puppy. I don't think you should worry about it, Paul. Maybe the dog was sick. I think you should be happy that you can travel. Body. You're not listening to me, Janice. I can't control my destination. I can't even remember where I've been. It's starting to get a little bit scary. Do you think people can predict their dreams? Most people don't even remember them. 
This isn't a dream. This is real. Absolutely. That's what sets you apart. Do you remember how trapped you used to feel? Yeah. I gotta get some control, Janice. I can't go on like this. Please don't give up, Paul. You will be able to control your destination. You will remember. I can. Shit. <laughs> something else on your mind? I saw something last night. Uh-huh. I saw something that I know isn't real. And yet, I swear to God, I saw it. Maybe I am getting old. God damn it, I hope I'm not getting senile. What did you see? Meister wasn't taking on new patients. Use the appointments calendar. They only want the most recent. For now, anyway. That's what I'm doing. What am I looking for, anyway? How the hell should I know? Weirdos. Logical start. <laughs> Shall I announce? Uh, Bill Pearson. Uh, I'm his father in law. Oh, um, up the stairs, around, and down, all the way down the hall. Paul, you follow in line on this way on. seeing a ghost. He recognized me. So what did you tell him? I told him he was crazy. Impressive argument. <laughs> Very funny. You can only be seen if you want to be seen, you know. But why would I want to be seen? I don't know. Maybe you wanted to scare him. Bothers you, doesn't it? Yes, it bothers me. Why? Because Pearson and I have never been the best of friends. I had no reason to go there in the first place. I think you should stop, Paul. You're getting very nervous and itchy. 
Take better care of yourself. You sound like Jennifer. No, she's right. My health isn't my main concern right now, you it's know mine. what I mean? I like you healthy. Before, I couldn't control my destinations. Now, I can't even control when it's gonna happen. It's bugging the hell out of me. I read that Dr. Meister died. Is that the real reason you're upset? No. Are you sure? Leave it alone, Jess. Paul. You came to me because I can help you. Well, here I am. Why don't you talk to me? Did you go to Dr. Meister? No. I mean, out of body. You visited your father-in-law, but you... You didn't remember that. That was different. How? How did Dr. Meister die, Paul? He died of a heart attack. It was in the newspapers. What are you getting at? You think I could have I killed him while I... I think you should stop. Is it possible for someone to unwillingly harm somebody while traveling? Unwillingly? Or willingly? sites? When did they bring him in? About an hour ago. Who is he? Chicken farmer. Shit. I wonder if he was selling chickens to Meister.
Bill Pearson was a very disturbed man the last time I saw him. In what sense? Well, I'm not sure. About a week ago, well, it must have been around midnight. I heard some noises outside to see what was going on. That, that dog of his was hysterical. And Bill looked up. Swear to God, he seen a blue form hovering near the house. I see ghosts all the time myself. Well, if you think Bill Pearson was crazy, this should confirm it. He swore the ghost he saw was Paul Sharp, his son-in-law. I thought everyone came down except uh, these two. Yeah, probably just a couple of funeral rats. So I got them? Oh, no. Show me Paul Sharp's. Just get into that. Mr. Paul Sharp. And here's the ice. He was a patient of Meister's. Uh-oh. Dissatisfied. Astro projection. Janice. Kudo. Ah, Bradley from Purpertoy. Murdoch from Telecrop. I never forget a face. Do I know you? I'm here to see Paul Sharp. Oh, oh, he, he's in, he's in. I know, I know. Down the hall. Hi, Paul. Yeah. Sergeant Detective Kaufman. What can I do for you? <sighs> Routine questions about your father-in-law. Father-in-law? He's dead. Where were you the night that he died? Why? I'm asking the questions. About a heart attack? Slow day at the office. Like I said, where were you the night that he died? I was at home, in bed. That's better. With your wife? These days you can't take anything for granted. Least of all the sanctity of the bedroom. Why? You got problems with the sanctity of your bedroom? Dr. Meister also died of a heart attack, didn't he? You were a patient of his. How do you know? I read your file. You look surprised. I'm a cop. I'm allowed. I'd like those files back, if you don't mind. So, talk to your lawyer. I will. Good luck. How did you hurt your arm? A dog bit me. Your father-in-law's dog bit you. You talked to the dog, too? <laughs> You make movies? A long time ago. I make commercials now. By the way, do you know these people? No. Shame. Yes, I'm aware of the fact that I may be the only link between Carl Meister and Bill Pearson, but it's strictly coincidental, and I'd like to know why you're leaning on me. Am I leaning on you? I think you are, yes. Thanks for your time, Paul. I'm sure we'll talk again. By the way, your father-in-law was becoming senile. He thought he was seeing ghosts. Hello again. I'd like to use a phone, if I may. Of course. But there's one right over there. Thank you. Mac, do me a favor, will you? Go to Videoscope Limited and see if you can get me a video of a film called The Wandering Soul. The Australian Outback. Tribes living sometimes 500 miles apart can reportedly communicate with each other. This in a vast expanse of isolated wilderness devoid of telephone, telegraph, or any other means of electronic communication. How then is this communication achieved? One answer is astral projection. Wandering souls. 
a notion which defies logic and all existing religious beliefs, but in our highly industrialized, secular North American society, William and Monica Duval may be just that, wandering souls. As I was saying, Paul, our bodies, as you see them now, will soon be dead. And what happens then? We shall find others, suitable successes, you might say. You make it sound as if taking over another body was the easiest thing in the world. Heavens, of course it isn't. We don't want just anyone. Weaklings, simpletons, intellectual vagrants. Why would we want them? Lodgings, if you'll pardon the expression, of a certain physical, intellectual, and social standing. I mean, much more fascinating. The process can be quite lengthy, depending on the quality or resistance of the individuals. For instance, it's quite impossible to appropriate those firmly rooted or satisfied with their lives. Basically, you must prepare your hosts, play with their minds, confuse them, isolate them from those they love or need, set loose the anchor. <laughs> Monica and I have seen life and death through many eyes. Vita es morte es vita. Life is death is life. When William takes another body, what will you do? Remarkably enough, we've never been apart for long, regardless of whom we have become. What you're talking about here is spiritual vampirism. That sounds ghastly. But that's what it is. You have no qualms about destroying someone's life for the sake of your own survival? You speak of destruction. I speak of rebirth. Imagine a thousand-year-old mind inside a thirty-year-old body. You have... Bringing with me the wisdom of ages. What would happen if you die before you take over another body? Oh, what a dreadful thought. If your body dies prematurely, your soul weakens considerably. Unless a host is immediately available, and you manage to keep your wits about you. You become disoriented simply because you've lost home base. Unfortunately, it's happened. And it was not the most enjoyable experience. I shudder at the thought of having to compete once more with centuries of lost, demented souls who will do anything to return. It's rather a nasty realm out there. But there's also a higher level of spirituality. Couldn't you use your powers to achieve that instead of continuing this? Endless cycle of destruction. Such is our failing, Monica's and mine, that we cannot resist the attraction of this imperfect world. By the time this film was completed, Monica and William Duvall were dead. I said, stop it. I told you to stop that. What's the matter with you?
hungry, baby. Okay. It's just me. It's just your old mom. Somebody's going to die. Matthew, <laughs> nobody's going to die. <laughs> He was trying to get the keys to the basement. Astral projection? Basically, uh, astral projection is uh, the ability to travel outside one's body. The vehicle being a dream. Astral dreams, it's called. Uh, well, imagine yourself as, as two, uh, two entities. The physical entity and uh, the spiritual entity. Well, astral projection occurs when the spiritual entity separates itself from the physical entity and takes off. <laughs> As in death, for instance. Well, if you believe in souls. It uh, most often uh, occurs to people when they're in the medical operations or they're in a coma. Do you really believe that? There are people who do. And if I can't show their frauds, then how can I refute them? I mean, uh, do you believe in God? Well, uh, do you believe in reincarnation? Stuart, there are whole countries of people that believe in reincarnation, so... Uh, who is privy to the answer, eh? Have you ever heard of uh, wandering souls? Wandering souls? Uh, yes, Plato speaks of wandering souls. Mm. People who, for one reason or another, died uh, before they were ready. Will you be ready, sir? I can assure you, I will not be ready. Um, these people wander sort of aimlessly, as you can imagine, around graveyards in the vein, I can assure you, hope of trying to re-enter the world of the living did you cut that lecture? Probably. Hmm. What about spiritual vampires? Forget it. Now, going back to astral projection for a second. Theoretically speaking, if I'm traveling outside my body and I come and visit you, would you be able to see me? There are many factors to consider, but uh, yes, I don't see why not. What would I look like? Oh, well. Authors differ on this, but uh, they claim that some of them can be quite real looking. Could it be hazy, translucent blue, something like that? Well, I hardly consider that real looking. Uh, but yes, that is the most common sighting. So, if I was a little strange, I mean sensitive, I might think that I was seeing a ghost. Never the cynic, eh, Stuart? Excellent. <laughs> but don't. Make the mistake of discounting the abstract too easily, huh? Marries the receptionist. <laughs> All the best, buddy. <laughs> There's something about her. She makes me feel things I've never felt before. You're the first person I've told. She doesn't want her flying around, not yet anyway. You know how people are. Where is she now? Oh, at home recuperating. <laughs> Animal. You're getting any sleep? Mm-hmm. I'm fine. She's Amelia Lambro, a dancer. Pretty good one, too, or used to be, anyway. She dropped out of the West End Dance Company about a year ago. No one's heard much since. Her? She's Isis, a uh, family named Carmichael, but she never uses it. Also a dancer, but uh, not much up here. She dropped out a short time after Lambro. She'd really get off this stuff. How'd you trace him to the West End? We had a file on Lambro, a minor drug bust, a couple of years back. Grass? Acid. Grass those drugs. Mm -hmm. Any connection to Paul Sharp? None I can get a fix on. Hello, Isis. I'm looking for Amelia Lambro. What? 
Can you read? She's not home. I know. So where is she? I don't know. Let me go. Go. home for dinner tonight. I've got to shop, prepare the roast, cake a bake, clean this whole place, take a bath, get dressed, put on my makeup, and make sure I don't burn the house down. Am I worried? Are you kidding? I've never had so much fun in my life because I'm playing Happy Brings the Boss to Dinner, Coma's new video game designed especially for housewives like you and me. Cut. Bring it. Tail flame. That was great. I think I made a mistake, Paul. Can we do another take? It sounded great to me. Okay, everybody, let's move over here for a new camera position for the beauty shot. Let's go. Come on, everybody, let's go. Paul, Paul, I think she's right. She did make a mistake. You want to direct this piece of shit? No, no, I'm just saying there may be no, a problem. No, listen, hey, I think you should try it. See how you like it. Hey, oh. wait a minute. I'm paying the bills. Paul, please, just one more. All right, you tell me what to do, you fat faggot. I've been carrying you and this company for years, and I had enough. You direct it. Uh, I'm sorry. Get it done, I don't care how you do it, but get it done. Get talk to her. Get her to call me. Get her to call me. Janet, leave a message and I will call you. Call me. My goodness, but you're anxious to meet me. Jesus. How flattering. I'm sorry, but the party is over. 
As you can see, you have to go. Listen, Rambo. You've had your ass busted before, so don't push me. You're here to arrest Lambro. How disappointing. She's not here. You're Amelia Lambro. You think so? You want to play games? No. I'm sorry. I try to be hospitable to all my guests, even if they do break and enter. My name is Janice. Now, will you kindly get out of here? Or you'll be very sorry. That sounds like a threat. Do you feel threatened? Not by you, I don't. Are you afraid of death, dear boy? Don't be. Vita es morte. Es vita. Look, let's get the bullshit. All I want to know is what you know about Paul Sharp. Sorry, I thought Scott was. Uh... No, he's uh, out meeting clients. Anything I can do? No, no. Congratulations, by the way. I haven't seen you since. Since our shotgun wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Scott is a wonderful man. Yeah, he is. I'm happy for both of you. Listen, um, it'll be gone a while. Join me for lunch? Sure, why not? Good. This woman walks into the company, and six months later, now he's my partner. Oh, not exactly. Pretty close. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about us. We hardly know each other. We will. I have a feeling you and I are going to be very good friends. After all, if... Your wife can take long strolls with that detective. I don't see why you and I can't enjoy a pleasant meal.
you. Matthew, listen to me. Do you hear me? Open your mouth. Come on, spit that up. That's it. That's it, baby. More. Come on. I just buried my wife. So tell me again, you don't know that ghoul Janice. You went to the office, you fell asleep. What'd you do then? You call home? Stay away from me, Cop. I mean it. Tell me that was a goddamn heart attack. Son of a bitch. Surprise. Did you bring the car? You know what? I feel it. Let's go to that new sushi We'll be together again. Forever. Monica, if William dies first, what will you do? Remarkably enough, we've never been apart for long, whomever we became. Basically, you must prepare your hosts. Play with their minds. Confuse them. Isolate them from those they love or need. Need me drink it. Hmm? <clears throat> Who? Who made you drink it? He was my friend. Once this is done, it becomes merely a question of making an entrance and sending their soul into exile, as it were. And you mean you just enter? Oh, no. They want us. By then, they have despaired of this earth and are grateful to leave. 
Monica and I have seen life and death through many eyes. Who is your friend? Huh? The blue man. What? He said his name was William. Life is death is life. Vita es morte es vita. Life is death. Vita es morte. Te es vita. doing here? What do you think? I know how badly you want Janice or William or whatever she decides to be. Go to hell. Janice is mine. Bastard. No, I'm gonna lock you in the trunk. We will be nice and cozy until all this is over. One stupid move and I'll shoot you. You understand? Let's go.
Parsons, Stuart Kaufman's assistant. All right, all right. Good to see you. 
Why don't you go get the ice cream? Money. You want one? Ah, uh, no thanks. I gotta watch my week. Yeah. You're both looking good. Yeah, well, it's been a tough couple of months, but we're slowly putting it together. Matt's been great. Yeah. Kept us both going. I sold the company. You did? Yeah. I'm making another film. That's great. Yeah. How's Kaufman doing? He got out of the hospital and quit the force. Yeah, something he's been wanting to do for a while, it seems. Anyway, he's traveling now. Where exactly? I'm not sure. Well, good for him. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Will he make it? <laughs> well, I'll be off. Oh, well, good to see you, Mick. Take it easy. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. What's yours? Tutti Fruity Ripples. <laughs> no thanks. Oh, good. <laughs> Good? Yeah. I still miss Mommy. So do I, man. Obrigado.